Hey guys, today we are going to look at sample spaces. We're going to answer the question, what are sample spaces and how can they be represented? So a sample space is a list of all the possible outcomes of an event. For example, the sample space of flipping a coin is heads or tails. A tree diagram is a way to display a sample space and the total possible outcomes of more than one event happening. So if we're flipping a coin more than once, such as flipping a coin twice, we can show all of the possible outcomes with a sample space. So the first time you could flip it and get heads or tails. And then after that, you would either get heads or tails again or heads or tails again. So that shows all of the possible outcomes of flipping a coin twice. So you can either list it out like this or you can do a tree diagram, which is what we're gonna practice below. So let's look at number one. It says, at Leander High School, students can take Spanish, Latin, or French for a language credit and choir, theater, or dance for a fine arts credit. What are the possible outcomes? How many total outcomes are possible? So I'm just going to start listing them out and I'm gonna start with Spanish. So if students take Spanish, then they could also pair that with quieter, theater, or dance. So they could do Spanish or choir, Spanish or theater, and then Spanish or dance. So there's the first possibility if they take Spanish for their foreign language. And then the second language possibility would be Latin. So they could take Latin and choir or Latin and theater or Latin and dance. And then the third possibility for foreign language is French. So kind of the same thing, they could take French and choir. Or they could take French and theater. Or they could take French and dance. So there are all the possibilities of the combinations of their language credit and their fine arts credit. So we showed all the possible outcomes and now it wants us to say how many total outcomes are possible. Well, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine possible outcomes based on those different electives. So this one was fairly easy to visualize the different outcomes. We just listed the different foreign languages and then we paired them with the fine arts. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, especially if we have more outcomes. So we will want to use a tree diagram just to organize our thinking a little bit better. So let's look at number two. It says, Tim is deciding what to have for breakfast. He can have coffee or orange juice. And to eat, he can have a bagel, cereal, or yogurt. Create a tree diagram and list all the possible outcomes. So the first thing that he has to decide is if he is going to have coffee or orange juice. I'm gonna make the tree diagram first and then I will list out the possible outcomes. So coffee or orange juice is the first thing he has to decide. And then after he decides that, he can have a bagel, cereal or yogurt. So from the coffee, he could also have a bagel, cereal or yogurt. So from the OJ, he could have a bagel, cereal or yogurt. Okay, now let's list out all of these possibilities. So he had three possible options with the coffee. He had coffee, with a bagel or coffee with cereal or coffee with a yogurt. And he could have the same combinations except with orange juice instead. So he could have 
orange juice and a bagel, orange juice and cereal, or orange juice and yogurt. So there are two different ways to show all the possibilities with our tree diagram or just listing it out. All right, let's look at number three. It says, Joe is shopping for a car. It comes in red, blue, or silver. He can choose between a two-door or a four-door version and a manual or automatic transition. Create a tree diagram to show the sample space and determine how many total outcomes are possible. So the first thing that he's going to decide on is if the car comes in red, blue, or silver. So that's what I'm going to put at the top of my tree diagram. Red, blue, or silver. And then from that, he has to decide between a two door and a four door version. So from the red, he could have a two door or a four door. Same with the blue, two door or four door. Same with the silver, two door or four door. And then after that, he also is going to decide on a manual or automatic transmission. So from each of the two door or four door options, he's also gonna have the manual or automatic transmission option. Okay, and then it asked us to determine how many total outcomes are possible. You count the last row or the last um, section that you did in your tree diagram, and that will tell you how many possible outcomes. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 total options for this car. 12 outcomes are possible for the type of car that he's gonna get based on the color, the number of doors, and the manual or automatic transmission. All right, let's look at number four. It says a two-sided coin is flipped three times, create a tree diagram to show the sample space. So when we are flipping a coin, we have the option for heads and tails, which I'm just going to abbreviate H and T. So when we flip it for the first time, we will have heads or tails option. And then we will flip it a second time and have heads or tails. And then we will flip it a third time and have heads or tails. So there is the tree diagram to show flipping a coin three times. All right, let's look at number five. An ice cream shop sells vanilla, chocolate, and cookies and cream ice cream. Customers can choose from a waffle or sugar cone and then either hot fudge or caramel topping. Create a tree diagram to show the sample space. So first thing we are going to decide is vanilla, chocolate, or cookies and cream. So I'm gonna list that at the top of my tree diagram. Vanilla, chocolate, or cookies and cream. And then they're going to decide from a waffle cone or a sugar cone. So waffle or sugar, waffle or sugar, waffle or sugar. And then they're going to decide from hot fudge or caramel topping. So either the hot fudge or caramel topping. Hot fudge or caramel. Hot fudge or caramel. Hot fudge or caramel hot fudge or caramel, and hot fudge or caramel. So there shows all the possible outcomes for the dessert that they would get at that ice cream shop. 
Okay, let's look at number six. James rolls a standard six-sided die. If he rolls a three or less, then he flips a coin. If he rolls a four or more, then he spins the spinner shown. Create a tree diagram to show the sample space. So the first thing I need to do is list out the possibilities whenever he rolls the six-sided die. So he is either going to roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Then if he rolls a three or less, he will flip a coin. So I'm gonna fill out what that looks like for one, two, and three. If he rolls a one, then he's gonna flip a coin and he'll either flip heads or tails. Same thing with the two, it'll be heads or tails. Same thing with the three, it'll be heads or tails. But if he rolls a four or more, then he spins the spinner shown. And on the spinner, we can roll a or spin to a red, blue, gray, or pink. So we have four outcomes after he rolls a four, five, or six. He would roll or spin to a red, blue, pink, or gray. If he rolled a five, it would be the same thing. Red, blue, pink, or gray. And then same thing, if he rolled a six, then he would spin the spinner and it would either be red, blue, pink, or gray.